If you clicked on this video, let me guess. You're tired of your DTF prints coming out very heavy and unbreathable. If you think that your only solution is to cut out the background with some scissors, you're going to have a hard time. Let us help you turn something like this into something like this. That's why I'm excited to actually showcase this lava snake design. We're going to make this into a breathable, wearable t-shirt design using a black knockout effect and proper halftones. We're also taking this artwork to the next level by doing something that isn't really talked about in the DTF realm, and it's called color range selection. If you ever struggled with gradient heavy designs or found your prints too bulky, this video, this is going to be for you. We'll show you guys how to break down colors precisely, turn gradients into halftones, and achieve a breathable vibrant print that looks amazing on black shirts. Stick around to the end to see what the design looks like pressed onto a shirt. You won't want to miss that and if you're hungry for more pro tips make sure to hit that subscribe button. We're also going to be giving away this artwork in the description below so if you want to follow along let's get to work and make some stunning DTF designs. For today's video we will be creating a color range, halftone effect, and color knockout on our image. To start, we will focus on the color range. Color range refers to a selection tool that allows you to select a specified range of colors within an image. This tool is particularly useful for isolating and editing specific colors without affecting the rest of the image. To start, open the image you want to work on in Photoshop. In this video, we will be using this snake image. Here is our original image. We've edited it a bit to make it look like it's not inside a box. Once we finish our video, we can use the finished artwork for our printing, especially on clothing. Let's begin by color ranging our image, but first let's create a new layer for our background. Go to the layer panel and click the round icon at the bottom of the panel. Then look for solid color and click it. A color picker will appear. Choose any color for our background for now. Let's just choose black. Then go to the top menu and select select then simply click color range. This will bring up the color range dialog box. When you open the color range dialog box, you'll see a preview of your image. This preview displays the selected color range as a grayscale mask overlaying your image. The selected colors appear as white, while unselected areas appear as black. Within the color range dialog box, you have several tools for making selections. Eyedropper tool, Click on a color in your image to select it. Add to sample eyedropper. Hold down the shift key and click to add more colors to your selection. Subtract from sample eyedropper. Hold down the alt, windows, or option in Mac and key and click to remove colors from your selection. After selecting the area with the fire, all colors resembling the fire were also selected. Our next step involves copying and pasting, allowing us to create a new layer. Ensure the main image is selected, then proceed to convert the copied layer into a smart object. Navigate to the copied layer, right click, and choose Convert to Smart Object. Simply click on it, and a small icon will appear on the layer. Now let's transition to applying the halftone effect. Click on the small icon of our smart object, which will lead us to a new tab where we'll implement the halftone effect. To start the process, go to the top left part of our screen and select image, then go to mode and choose grayscale. You'll notice the image is now in black and white. It's up to you if you want to improve the shadows and highlights of our image. To do this, you can go to image again, then adjustments and select levels or simply press Control plus L. A box will appear where you can adjust the appearance of your image. Once you're satisfied, just press OK. In our next step, go to Image, then Mode, and select Bitmap. A small box will appear asking you to flatten layers. Just press OK. Then another box will appear for the output resolution. Make sure it's set to 300. After pressing OK, another box will appear for the settings on how our halftone effect will appear. For the frequency, the standard is 40, but feel free to experiment with it. Keep the angle as it is 22, and for the shape, select round, then press OK. If you notice 
At this zoom level, the result may not be very obvious, but if we zoom in, we'll see that it has indeed been converted to halftone. What happened here is that all the highlighted parts of our image have been converted to halftone. Also, notice that our image is now black and white, but we're not done yet. The next thing we'll do is to save our result by pressing Control plus S and close it by pressing the X icon on the tab or simply press Control plus W to go back to our previous project tab. Next, it's better to rename the layer to avoid confusion. Then, here's what we'll do with our layer. Zoom in on the image to see it clearly, then press W for the magic wand tool and select the black parts of the half tone in the image you'll see it get selected. Next, go to the upper part of the screen and click Select, then Similar. This will select all similar black areas in the layer. Now, at the bottom of the layer panel, you'll see a rectangle icon with a circle inside. That's our Add Layer Mask. Just click on it, and the selected black halftones will be masked. Then, at the bottom of our layer panel, you'll see the effects icon. Just click on it and choose Color Overlay. The Color Picker box will appear. Just select a color. For now, let's choose Red. At this point, the outcome might not be very visible, but if you hide the main image, you'll see the halftone effect we've created. Now that we're done with the first part of our tutorial, we need to repeat the same process we used on the fire in the image for the highlight part and the mid-tone part of our snake image. But first, let's hide the work we've done so far so that we don't get confused with the next steps and unhide the main image to use as our guide. For the next part, we'll be using color range on the mid-tone part of our image. Just follow the same process we did to achieve the same result as we did with the fire part of the image. Once you're ready and have selected the mid-tone of our image, you can adjust and experiment with the fuzziness of the selected color. Fuzziness determines how much similar colors are included in the selection. Higher fuzziness includes a broader range of colors while lower fuzziness is more precise. Experiment with the fuzziness setting to achieve the desired effect for the mid-tones. Here in this part, we simply added a dark background to avoid confusion because the color of our mid-tone is somewhat light. Now that our mid-tone color range is okay, let's make it light blue for now to make it visible against our dark background. However, you still have control over it, so feel free to experiment when you're the one doing it. Now that we're done with our mid-tone, let's move on to the highlight color range. Again, we'll follow the same process for all, but this time we'll select the highlights of the image. Let's get started.
Now that we've half-toned the highlight, let's choose green for the color as an example for now. Then let's unhide the first two layers for the fire and mid-tone parts. And don't forget to place our highlight layer at the top of the panel so it won't be covered by other layers. At last, here is our finished product using color range, halftone effect, and color knockout. Remember, this is just a tutorial example showing how it's done. Feel free to experiment, tweak, until you achieve the desired look for your image. While creating this tutorial, I had some time to experiment with the color range and its settings. On the left, you can see the outcome of the design as we followed the tutorial. On the right, you can see the design where I experimented and tried different settings in the color range. You should also take the opportunity to explore the color range settings when you have the chance. You will be amazed by the results, just like I was with what I achieved today. We are back with the designs. Let's take a look at them. So for the first one, just gonna showcase the original design just so we could give it a comparison. For the second one, what we did was just a black knockout and some proper half tones. So just to give a good comparison on what we really did and got out, we did really well on taking a lot of the black and the gray out. And flipping it in the back, you can see that this one's gonna be a lot more breathable, a less heavy, while this one is just a full sheet. <laughs> and could already feel heavy in my hand. The next two are gonna be the same as a, a black knockout. We did a black knockout as well as also a color range. So with this one, what we did more of was a color range of the green and orange. Um, this one's all right. I, I, I really do like this one though. We did make the color pop a lot more, making the eyes glow and the color just really radiates a lot, a lot more than what I would see in this one as well as also we captured a lot more than this one. And I can see also in this color range, this one just has more definition. <laughs> but I'm happy to see both of them out and see how it goes. This is the versatility you have going through with DTF. So let's get to it with Preston. For our blanks, we have two large Bella Canvas black shirts with the model number of 3001. If you guys want to check them out, their link will be in the description below. For our heat press, for any new viewers, this is our Heatmaster Prisma with its 16 by 20 layout and 10 inch pullout and the ability to actually thread the shirt as what a screen printer would do. It makes it a no brainer of why we would like this heat press the most. All right, let's get to pressing. Again, we're really not going to sell this shirt. We're not going to do anything, but just more of a project just to see how it's going to look. It is already a hot or cold peel, so you can already peel it right away, but we like to wait just to make sure everything is on nothing comes out so this is really good this is really nice let's take a look so we're gonna heat press it one more time just so we can embed this Looking really into it, it looks good, it looks nice. I mean, everything got embedded, but it's very solid. And as you can tell when I scrunch it up, it's already very, very much dented up. So, I mean, you can heat press this again, and it's like a wrinkle, we'll take it off, but let's see if the knocked out version could help with this problem.
again just to the best of my capability just so it could look straight from afar I'm gonna be honest, I'm not loving it as much as I think. So to be transparent, it didn't capture as much as we thought we did. And listen, learn, you have a couple more we're gonna check out, but I do like how the snake definitely came out it's just the background we definitely needed the background a lot more too as well but or you know if we come to it we could definitely remake this but as far as this comes out i definitely like the snake it, it came out well it's very breathable and when now i'm scraping up nothing the, no wrinkles you know i don't have to heat press this for that so yeah i think it came out good so for the next one are going to be the color ranges. So this one, I didn't really have that many high hopes in the beginning, but it actually doesn't seem that bad. It gives me kind of like a digital art type look, but you still can tell it's a snake. I mean, from all the other images, but I mean, the eye and everything, everything looks like a snake. So you could definitely tell it's a snake. It's giving me more of like a band type shirt. Like if this was supposed to be some kind of sick band that was supposed to be playing, you know? But all right, you know, this one came out great. Let's go on to the next. So this one, again, color range variation was, uh, was just to bring out more of a brightness. I'm actually very excited for this one. We're gonna take our time with this one. All right, guys. So it is giving me a band shirt again, but brighter. I like the colors, the eye. It's definitely, yeah, it's like a metal type shirt. It's That's what it's giving me. But yeah, no, the snake came out great. All the colors, the gradients, the half tones, everything came out amazing. Even the lava, it's like different shades of the color range. So I'm liking it. I do, I do. All right, cool, awesome. I did great. There you guys have it. I think it came out great. Definitely unexpected on some cases. And I definitely think we could do a lot better. But all in all, if you did enjoy the video, please leave a like and subscribe. I'll catch you guys on to the next one.